Graham, you now have another book out. What is this one? Uh, well, well, this one really sort of revisits the other ones that I've done. I've done 14, and, um, and this one sort of goes back into it and says, now, come on, really, you know, it's about time you got smart. Um, my wife, Trina, had a heart attack and a stroke, and, uh, and also I used to get seasick on our boat. So um, the, the thing was, how do you change, you know? How do you go from something that you love and that you've worked on all your life to something which is uh, healthier and uh, where you can serve and love the person that you really care about a lot. So this is the book, and Minimize Risks, Maximize the Flavor for her sake and for my family, first of all, and then rolled it out on television, and here's the book. Now, tell me, the food in it, do people notice the taste when it's, you know, less fat, less this, less um, that? Yeah, uh, there, th as you know, there, there's a real difference here. Um, it's as if fat is, uh, it has always been regarded as excellence. Um, and I've been trying to look at it now as exceptional. You know, it's a great taste and everything else, but um, excellence for me now is something where I can um, win a reputation as a good cook, uh, except that it shouldn't be at somebody else's expense. And so is there a difference in taste? Yes. But what I've done is by pulling down the fat and salts and sugars, then at the same time building up the aroma, color, and texture. I just call it ACT, ACT. Um, you act upon the aromas, the colors, and textures. You can actually build a kind of smoke screen and then take the fat out. Uh, and, and it's not so much missed as it would be under normal circumstances. Now, is the book for people who have expertise in cooking or for people like me who you know, uh, past macaroni and cheese, I'm not real good. <laughs> um, I think for both. Um, there's a real range, you know, from, from uh, kicking it into gear with sloppy joes. Uh, most people have their own way of fixing sloppy joes, and mine is more or less the same method, uh, but really quite radicalizing the ingredients, and so you could start out on that basis. And then move up line if you wanted to, and there are some really quite exotic things for those people who um, you know, uh, into what I call recreational cooking. You know, on a Wednesday uh, and a Saturday afternoon, some people like to say, okay, fine, it started to rain, um, I'm going to cook. Now, you appear on TV, as we all know. Now, how many years have you been doing your TV show? Um, first time in TV on TV was 1960 in New Zealand. Um, and I've been virtually non-stop through that, with the, the exception of a 10-year period, um, from 74 um, through 84, 87, yeah. Is it difficult cooking on TV? Um, Do you ever have times when suddenly you're cooking something for the camera and it does not turn out exactly the way you hoped? Oh yeah, I mean, you know, this happens a great deal, and, and that's the kind of, that's the adrenaline side of it, that's what's such fun. Nothing is ever the same, nothing ever seems to work just identically. And um, so I always build about two or three minutes into every half-hour program for, you know, things that don't normally, uh, um, you know, happen. Uh, once I had a pot of um, water which was boiling underneath some melted lard, as you can see this is years ago, because the lard wouldn't be there at the moment. And, and th there was a lot of fire underneath that, the lard was very cold, and suddenly the heat of the water underneath blew out of the top of the seal of the fat on the top, and there was boiling hot water and fat erupted all o over the set. Now, it went into my eyes, and I got uh, second degree burns over my face, um, and I, I staggered back against the set, hit the back wall of the set, and I thought I'd gone blind. Um, and, uh, and Trina, who's my wife, who's my producer, said, keep the cameras rolling. If he's gone blind, let's keep it on tape, you know. This is the industry. Um, but I was fine, and uh, so a few minutes later, somewhat slicked back. I looked as if I'd come out of the 20s, you know, uh, um, back on the air and carrying on. What do you cook in your house? Uh, can your family expect a real interesting meal every night? Um, you know, very, the big issue, I think, uh, with us food people is that we, uh, we tend to fit into a variety from a professional point of view, but, but at, at home it's very simple and has the tendency to be fairly repetitious. And so um, I have oh, probably a range of 20 or 30 dishes that I'm currently working on that I would spread out over the, the, the normal months. Um, 
and, and we do them again and again and again until we've got it right. So um, I, I, I love to cook in about uh, half an hour to three quarters of an hour at the end of a busy day of cooking. Tell me, um, with your book, yeah. do you think that many people will start to eventually watch what they're eating and start to go with the loaf that way? Absolutely. Um, there's a hundred million people at the present moment in the United States that are at risk as far as uh, their food is concerned. They know it and some people are simply saying, eh, you know, I don't understand it, I can't, I can't rationalize it, I don't have a computer, I don't know how it works. Um, I really believe that the television series is very important from that point of view because it shows people what to do. But then beyond the television thing, you've got to see a picture of what it is that you're going to finish and you've got to have certain things at your disposal. You've got to start to be able, I think you've got to, I mean that's a, such a hard word, but it's a good thing. If you look at the numbers and then look at the dish and say to yourself, oh I see, I think I understand this one. And then start into a rhythm of doing a dish once a week for your family and seeing what they like. So fly a kite with them. Um, most people that I know who cook for their family and love doing it, really love the people that they're cooking for and they care about them. They, they want to please them. And it's that combination which is so extraordinary. That, that's, that's why I think the book is going to work and that's why I think people will do it. Because be, in, in America, although people are critics of us, I'm an American citizen now regardless of the accent, um, I, I think we are a caring people and I do think very much that we want to please people. We're sort of a ple um, we, we're happy when we're pleasing people. So if we can just melt those two things together, I think we're into a whole new style of living in the U.S., which is going to run us up to the year 2000. We're going to be a, a, an interesting place to be. Do you think that people are, or that there is a different food desire and cooking style from the West Coast to, let's say, the East Coast? You know, people in Hollywood compared to sure. New York, are, uh, is one group more than risk than the other? Yes, uh, clearly there are regional uh, manifestations and uh, they're all good, you know, the Southwest cuisine, you know, has come up from the Mexican influence and South American influence and uh, up in the Northwest now, in the Pacific Northwest, there's a lot of seafood and fresh foods and uh, a lot of Asian influence is beginning to come in. As far as uh, West Coast and East Coast, there's always going to be that kind of um, avant-garde group, you know, who are going to want to eat the sort of uh, unusual because it is sort of the in food at the time. And those are kind of fatty and they come and go. But I think with the Pennsylvanian Deutsch rather than Pennsylvanian Dutch sort of kind of food, the, it's, it's regional, it's going to stay, it's, it's part of our culture and should have everybody trying to improve it. And by the way, on that issue, um, uh, that is one of the things that concerns me a great deal. In removing certain fats and building other flavors up, you do change some of those regional characteristics of dishes. And I've tried to maintain the love of that sort of food and not do damage to it. I've, I've really been tried to be very careful with it. My final question, what message do you tell someone right now that would actually have them go out to the bookstore and pick up the book? My hope is that you would find uh, in this book a hundred catalog items, you know, something that you just happened because the book cost $25, you, you pick them up, they're 25 cents each. Look at them like catalog items, open it up, try one that you really think that you'll like, and then start flipping pages to the next one. I, my great hope is that this is a book where at least 30 of the hundred recipes will find their way into a person's home almost immediately. Now, if I can really quickly, I appreciate the time, if I can really quickly get you to do a promo for you and the book and being on the show where you say, Hi, I'm Graham Kerr. Right. Coming up on Inside Entertainment, I'm going to be telling you about my new book and give the title, so don't go away. N now, you say that's News Time Entertainment? Inside Entertainment. With Inside Time. Entertainment. Right, so it's Inside Entertainment and Barry Blake are your two key names that you can tease it any way you want. Okay. And at your leisure. All right. Hello, I'm Graham Kerr, and I'm going to be with Barry Roskin in Inside Entertainment, and uh, got a fantastic discussion with him about a marvelous new subject, my new book. <laughs> uh, we have a lot of fun. Do join us, won't you? God bless. Perfect. Thank okay. you again for the time. All right. Thanks so much, Barry. Thanks.